This video is dedicated to Mr. and Mrs. Thomas of Bleep to Bleep England, better known as the parents of Waffle Sam. One of the things that we have in common is the remodeling of kitchens. I've done two and they've done at least one. Mr. and Mrs. Thomas's project is particularly challenging because they've chosen to live in their house while they do the remodeling. A kitchen is at best the virtual center of the house and oftentimes it can be the physical center of the house. I can relate to their situation because in 1994 the house that I lived in on Delaware Street in Indianapolis the kitchen was the very center of the house and I chose to remodel that. If you look at this badly drawn floor plan of the house on Delaware Street the kitchen was literally in the middle of the house. It connected to the hall that went to the sleeping area of the house it, the, the utility room was off it, the guest bathroom was off it, you had to go through it to get to the family room or to go out the back door and you went into the dining room from there as well. It was partially visible from the front hallway and any dirt and construction could also find its way into the living room. It was not fun. In an earlier tour of 510 I took you through 500 which is the small cottage behind our house that we rent. Originally when this was a farm that place was a barn and in the 1950s the owner turned it into a carriage house to rent. The kitchen had never been updated in 40 some years and so we decided it was high time to do that. For one thing we have a kind of a standard in the two houses that we rent that we wouldn't rent a house out that we wouldn't live in ourselves and uh, that kitchen was pretty bad. We're near the end of the process so let's go down there now and uh, see what we've got. The entire downstairs of 500 is finished in this knotty pine which uh, given where we're located back by this woods can definitely make it feel as if you're in a cabin somewhere. But as you can see from this view, the master bedroom filled with remodeling junk right now. Even in the daytime, it can be quite dark. Here's the kitchen as it was, very dark with its 1950s cabinets and its tiny apartment style stove. The sink was on the inside wall, so there was nothing really to look at while you were doing dishes and there was no dishwasher. For that reason, we chose to do it in white cabinets with fairly light colored countertops and we removed the knotty pine paneling from the kitchen and put in wallboard with a kind of a light yellow color to it. Here's the built-in breakfast nook and the half wall you see there is load-bearing. The beam right here carries the weight of a, a big cross member upstairs supporting the floor. And here is my new design for the kitchen. Again, the way we ended up building it, the cabinets that you see right there are off to the side rather than above the island. One of the things we did is we moved the sink under the window. The stove used to sit right here where the dishwasher is next to the sink. It was a very small apartment style stove and there was no counter space here. Looking over on this side we've put the stove where the sink was, put a microwave and cabinets above it, we built in a pantry and we added a cabinet above the washer and dryer and we also added a cabinet above the refrigerator. This is the trench from where we had to move the plumbing for the sink from the inside wall to the outside wall. The only lighting out here before was in this fan and a small light fixture above the dinette. Now we have can lights and under the counter lights and it makes it all quite bright in here. Because the breakfast nook is gone, we had to sacrifice a part of the living room to become a dining area. We added the semi-antique uh, drop-down light that you see over there. And we extended the tile all the way to the front door. Given the small size of the living room right now, as a result of that, what we would like to do someday 
has pushed this wall out where the two windows are about six to eight feet and have a sunroom. Like so many people do, we've used a half and half kind of approach, the very heavy work and, and somewhat technical work of hanging the cabinets we had done by a professional and then the smaller tasks we're doing ourselves. Here's Ruth busy with the painting. In the course of construction there's always unplanned changes. The cabinets you see here were originally going to be suspended above the peninsula which is why you see this rather wide bulkhead here. Although they were going to have glass doors on both sides we thought they cut off the kitchen too much from the rest of the house and there was also this wall was largely blank here and so we moved them to this wall to open things up and give a more balanced look around the sink. The interesting thing about using a contractor who is very familiar with old houses is there is a beam that goes through here that holds the upstairs up. Originally right in the very middle of this shot there was a pillar that supported that beam and the upstairs floors rested on it. To take that pillar out would have required the installation of a much bigger beam that would have hung down even lower than the old beam and it really would have look nasty but what the our contractor decided to do was to remove the beam and put a new beam in a higher position where the floor joists upstairs are end nailed into it rather than sit on top of it here we can see where the floor joists are end nailed into the new beam if they sat on top of the beam like they used to you could see it would extend down another four inches or so and of course things like that create some unintended consequences. For example, they had to build a temporary wall to hold the floor up upstairs while they were removing and replacing the beam and that put a big nick in the ceiling. So I'll have to sand that out, stain it, and repolyurethane it. One of the things we did was we saved all the knotty pine that we removed during uh, the demolition part and reused it to make pieces for the new kitchen. This piece here still has the original finish on this side, but our contractor put it through a router and put this nice rounded curve on this side as he turned what had been a piece of wall paneling into trim. And now I've had to put several coats of stain on it and then I will polyurethane it. Although it's not quite as dark as the old in time, this will mellow and come to match that. You can see that same effect here. Several years ago we had replacement windows put in and they had to add new cells. We had just let those age a couple years and they darkened quite a bit on their own and then as part of this effort I've, I've stained them and you can hardly tell that they're not part of the original woodwork. So there's where we are on the remodeling of the kitchen at 500. It's very pleasant now and should the day come when we can no longer climb the stairs at 510 and perhaps have to let one of our kids live there, we could very easily move back here using the master bedroom that's on the first floor and not have to deal with stairs anymore and we'll have a very nice kitchen to cook and eat in. So to Mr. and Mrs. Thomas, Waffle Sam and the rest of their family, let me say Although it's undoubtedly been a pain living in your house while you've been remodeling the kitchen, I believe in the end you'll find out it was well worth the time, the pain, and the expense. Good luck with it.